Welcome to the Gadget 360 show and I've got two or three categories that are my favorites and all of them happening at the same time on the show. We'll start our show off with this, the Microsoft Surface Go. A little different from the other Go products that have actually come out before this because this now is a full-fledged keyboard attached computer which I think is great because now it becomes a super ultra portable. I mean it's about 10, 11 inches, very light, very thin but is it everything that you want in an ultra portable? The great part, Microsoft finally has realized that pricing in India is important, starts off at about 60,000 rupees. Then we'll move on to a Mi TV, 55 inch. Mi's always done well with their TVs, but I've always found them to be a little underwhelming. I mean, they've got some of the things right, the specs are right, but somehow at the end of it, whenever I've tried a Mi TV, I've always, always thought, Kuch kaam jo hai na, it's not doing the, absolutely the right job. So we'll see if this one changes my opinion. Then we'll move on to Yes, Valentine's and therefore we'll do a gifting guide, a very different way to do a gifting guide. And at the end of it, one of the things that could easily make it on the gifting guide is this, the Brio Eye Massager. Now, you know, a lot of people say all these health products uh, at some point or the other are things that you buy, they you find it absolutely amazing and then you never use it again after you've used it for the first month or so. I thought these were actually pretty good. We'll talk about it in our review. So let's start off with the show this week with news and headlines coming in from the world of gadgets. Good news for the gaming industry. The Electronic Entertainment Expo, or E3 as it's commonly known, is making a comeback. After being cancelled in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, E3 is coming back in 2021 in an online avatar. The Entertainment Software Association has announced that it will conduct an online E3 from June 15th to June 17th. The company also claims that the online E3 will transform the gaming showcase. So our top story is the Microsoft Surface Go and frankly speaking I'm going to tell you my opinion right at the top and we'll go into a detailed review. First and foremost Microsoft Surface products. Always thought they were great because you know Windows while it's a very interesting operating system one of the biggest problems was that Apple always had better hardware, better looking, sleeker, everything was just more Apple-ish and therefore if you were a Windows person you usually used a laptop which had a few problems, a few shortcomings, you never felt that you were using something very sophisticated or stylish. Well, that has changed, but the real change came when Microsoft got into the Surface product series. And from within that, one of the most portable one has always been the Surface Go. Now they've changed it around for this year. What they've come up with this time is fantastic. This is a complete laptop in itself, so it's not a detachable. The tablet part of it doesn't come off or something like that, which is what I like. So I think ultra portable should be like that. Number two. Very thin, very light. Number three, very importantly, it's got pretty much the horsepower you require for an ultra portable. And the last part that I have to talk about, which is very important, is Microsoft's greatest problem has always been that they kind of always make their products too expensive and by the time they come into India, they become ridiculous. This one starts at about 60,000 rupees plus plus, which I think is great. But is everything great about this? Let's find out. After years of experimenting and launching exclusive Microsoft products, the legendary brand finally found success with their Surface lineup. Banking on that, the tech giant has introduced a new compact laptop under the Surface brand. The Surface Laptop Go is an ambitious project that promises to pack in performance and design. Today on the show, we are reviewing the high-end variant of this, the Surface Go laptop. So without any further ado, let's get straight to it. Microsoft has carried forward their minimalist design language in their latest portable laptop. The Surface Go comes in the brand's signature dual-tone outlay. The lid is in a grey finish and the plastic base is off-white. Microsoft is calling this colour scheme the Platinum. The minimalism continues when it comes to connectivity options. You get just a single USB Type-A port, a USB Type-C port and fortunately a 3.5mm headphone jack. Thanks to the compact design, this laptop is light, like really light at just about 1.1 kilos. But that didn't let us doubt its build quality since it feels sturdy when you work around it. The Surface lineup has been famous for its incredible touch capacitive screens and we can say after our testing that Surface Laptop Go has successfully followed in this footstep. 
The 12.4 inch Pixel Sense display is hands down one of the most responsive touch panels that we've used in a while. Be it pinch to zoom or swiping, the panel did not miss out on any command and the feedback was impressive. Beyond that, the screen has a resolution of 1536 by 1024 pixels, which is less given the kind of screens we're getting to see in 2021. Is it disappointing? Well, yes and no. Yes, because as a product, Microsoft could have added a higher resolution display. No, because a general consumer will hardly notice it. Despite the low resolution on paper, we had a great time watching content on it. It was no 4K, but we enjoyed switching between our favorite videos. There is a 720p HD camera on the laptop which is better than the one we saw on Surface Go 2. It is great for video calls but at the end of the day it is a laptop camera so expecting stellar image quality is not fair with this one as well. Talking about the spec sheet, this compact laptop is powered by a 10th gen Intel Core i5 processor which is not a powerhouse for performance but it does a decent job for a machine of this size. In our testing, the Surface Laptop Go was our daily driver with our activities ranging from internet surfing to emails and a wide variety of institutional work. Not so surprisingly, we didn't face any lags or heating. Credit for this smooth performance can be given to the 8GB of RAM on our variant which amplifies the performance of the mid-range processor on board. But not everything is great under the hood. The Surface Laptop Go comes with just 256GB of SSD storage on board which is definitely fast but it limits the user with its storage capacity. Now there is a touch screen display on this laptop but we found ourselves depending on the good old keyboard. The one on this laptop is in a classic chiclet style and boy it was fun working on it. The keys are soft and the travel time is on point. One drawback though, it is not backlit, which is disappointing given this laptop is pitched as a premium machine. Battery life on the Surface Go laptop is its underrated USB. We were getting a mileage of a good 5 hours in moderate to heavy use, which is great given its size. And it's time for our verdict. Microsoft Surface Laptop Go is a classic example of a near-perfect product. If the company wouldn't have cut corners in basic features like a backlit keyboard, a better display or more storage, this very well would have been in the category of the product of the year. That being said, starting at 63,499 rupees, it is a great laptop if you want to enter the pure Microsoft Surface ecosystem. Let's move on now to the Mi TV and like I said right in the beginning, Mi TVs are very popular in India. A lot of people bought it the first time because of extremely aggressive specs and extremely aggressive prices. They really started off with that whole revolution of great TVs at greatly lower prices. But somehow, like I said right in the beginning, I always find that when I read the specs, I'm very excited. But when I see the performance, when I sit down and watch something on a Mi TV, I'm always very disappointed. Something is not right. Sometimes I think I don't like the panel. Sometimes I don't like the color. I don't like the user interface at all. But I'm willing to have my opinion changed. And this Mi 55 inch TV may just be the one to do that. If you search buy a smart TV, your browser will show up a page with never ending results and we don't blame it. One of the fastest growing markets is indeed that of the smart TV and that was before smartphone brands started making one. One such brand is Xiaomi which was one of the first smartphone brands to enter the TV market. Adding to its portfolio, the brand has now introduced their QLED TV lineup which in their own words is quantum leaps ahead. Today on the show, we have their high-end 55-inch QLED 4K TV for review and we're set to take this leap. The Xiaomi QLED TV is perhaps one of the better looking TVs in terms of design by the brand. While the profile of the TV is slim, the build quality is impressive. The TV frame is made of aluminium alloy, which is definitely sturdy. While that secures the front, the back is made of plastic with carbon fiber finish, which looks great. There are small touches to break the monotony of the usual black overlay like a silver trim on the chin which is nice. Another subtle touch is this branding that reads designed by Xiaomi. Well, thanks for letting us know. There is also an upgrade to the connectivity side of things on this smart TV. There are now three HDMI 2.1 ports. There are also two USB ports, AV ports, a 3.5mm headphone jack and an ethernet jack as well. 
This 55 inch 4K QLED TV is part of a very niche club when it comes to the OS on board since it comes with Android 10 out of the box. Google's neat and tidy OS feels fluid on this massive 55 inch QLED panel. Google OS also means you can expect regular OTA updates on this TV just like we see on our smartphones. There is also a healthy share of pre-installed third-party apps along with all the Google apps. We also get to see a revised patch wall application. Unlike our previous encounter, it's not just a buffet of movie trailers but it actually loads up the content that you've searched for from the various applications. Talking about content, it was time to watch some of our favorite videos on this massive 55 inch display. The panel also supports HDR10 Plus to add to the experience. The panel is bright with amazing contrast and the color detailing was spot on. While we switched between various kinds of content from animated to live action, the TV did not disappoint us. You can also customize the video output according to your need since there are multiple picture modes on offer. Xiaomi has done a great job with the audio output this time around. There are four full range drivers on this TV which are bundled with two tweeters. Together they deliver something called an immersive audio experience. Doing away with that marketing mumbo jumbo, the sound was indeed loud and it didn't miss out on adding a solid bass to the tracks which we tuned into. Under the hood is a MediaTek 9611 chipset which is an absolute beast. From switching between windows to booting up applications, the TV never gave up on us. There is 32 GB of internal storage which is ample for downloading applications from the Play Store. The brand bundles in a Bluetooth remote with this TV. While we were happy that it's Bluetooth, we were also confused with not finding any batteries along. After finding a pair of cells, we can say that the remote works really well. In classic smart TV fashion, there is an inbuilt mic on the controller which can be used to access Google Assistant. And it's time to wrap our review. After spending the day with the Xiaomi TV, it is safe to say that it is indeed one of the best smart TVs we've tested in a long time. Perhaps its competitor, the Motorola 55-inch TV, is the only product that comes close to the experience we get to see here. What makes it a better deal is the price. At 54,999 rupees, this TV is indeed a champ in price to performance ratio. Time now for our gifting guide and like I said, Valentine's around the corner. So, you know, I find most gifting guides a little gimmicky. I mean, it's usually utter trash that has actually been propagated as give this, give that. So I hope Dhruv and Rubina really give you some stuff that really matters. I mean, at the end of the day, you're giving it to someone you love. Why do you want to give them garbage? Hi, I'm Rubina Mungia. And I'm Dhruv Mohan. This is the season of love as Valentine's Day is around the corner. So big plans through? Absolutely, Rubina. Absolutely. So, so I hear you have a long-term girlfriend. Have you like made out a list of things that you want to buy her? Actually, yes, Rubina. I do have a girlfriend and she is not imaginary. First of all, for the viewers out there. And uh, secondly, yes, I have big plans. I have a long list of items that I want to gift her and only half of them is what I can afford. So that's why we are here for all, all of you. And you know, we're going to suggest some good things to you as well. Right. So let's start off. What's the first thing on your bucket list? So my girlfriend is a big time audiophile and for that reason I'm actually planning to buy her a Apple AirPods Max, the latest AirPods and in the pink color. I know that my nice. stereotypical. Like that's just not right. Like you know all girls can like we like all the colors. That's true, but my girlfriend actually does like the color pink and I'm not being stereotypical at all when I say it. Uh, and the reason that I want to buy the AirPods Max is very simple. It, it has it is probably one of the best audio products out there right now. Uh, the price is a bit expensive and I have to get, an, get it on EMI, <laughs> just a post information right there for our viewers. And uh, You know, let me since... stop you there. Do not get like a Max on the EMI if you can't afford it. Just get the Pro, like AirPods Pro are very nice, great active noise cancellation. Keeping on that track, I'm going to ask Rubina, what is she planning to gift her husband? So my husband would love to receive the new Xbox. What do you think about that? Absolutely not. I think that <laughs> buying an Xbox right now is not the right thing, especially for the fact that the PlayStation has finally come to India. It has graced us with its presence. Dhruv, I bet my life you cannot buy a PlayStation right now in India because I, it's out of stock everywhere. But you know what? It's worth the wait, Rubina. It's absolutely so worth the So you're going to, on Valentine's Day, say, give a card and say, oh, your play, PlayStation 5 will come when, like, it comes in stock? Absolutely. I can bet that the card itself will make your husband more happy than the Xbox Series X. I, Promise you that. So where do you think is PS5 better than the Xbox? When it comes to the specs, 
Uh, the Xbox Series X on paper is definitely better than the PS5. I can't lie on that. But uh, when it comes to exclusive games, the PlayStation 5 is way ahead. Also, PS PlayStation 5's controller, the DualSense controller, is the best controller that I have personally seen. By the way, we did feature PS5 last week. Check it out on YouTube. So, Dhruv, what is the second thing on your list that you'd like to give your loved one? So, Rubina, actually, by now I have realized that indeed you are the champion here when it comes to gifts. So, another uh, thing that I was planning to gift my sister actually and my mother as well because they both. Uh, use their phone, they share it. I was planning to give them the iPhone 12 Pro Max uh, because of a lot of reasons, especially the camera. I feel that the LiDAR sensor right. and all, it is the perfect camera. It has, it has probably the best camera right now in the market out there. Roof, can you afford that camera phone? Like well, I can't. Or will you take that also on EMI for your girlfriend on the Valentine's Day? I mean, I cannot afford it, my father, but my father's credit card can. So <laughs> that's the thing. No, otherwise you can always take a look at Google Pixel 4a. I think it's again done a fabulous job with its camera so if you want to go in a budget you can look at that so a camera phone in a budget i think it's a perfect gift for a girl anyway i think the next product in line has to be a grooming product through whatsapp yeah actually that i think our viewers are waiting for that as well so for grooming actually my girlfriend is uh, looking for something when it comes to her hair because she is going out now finally you know, the situation is getting better and uh, i am actually getting her the dyson coral because uh, right. we have tested it out on our show and uh, for about 37,000 rupees, it has got all the best features and the Dyson logo. And uh, you know, it has got three heat settings. It has got, it doesn't damage the hair. That's that is, more important. So, right. yeah. I think Coral is a fantastic product. I use it, so I know it works. It's one of the best gifts. And if your, uh, if your girlfriend or your loved one already has like straight hair and it's not into really hair ironing, they can also take a look at the Dyson Air Wrap because mm. that's again fantastic with a lot of combination of blow drying and you know like a lot of attachments that come with it I think it's a, it's a wonderful in, in investment On the grooming realm itself what do you want to gift uh, to your loved one a man now because we have covered women so what is what do you want to gift them, uh, you know a, uh, a man So there is there is uh, something from Philips called the one blade so oh, which yeah. you really need it right now like you need to groom yourself I absolutely do I need so, to take a bath as well by the way so it, it's, it's a good tech product and I, I think it's it's a wonderful gift it's it, it's in a budget it does the job it makes the man look like a man and not like actually yes it is a great product when it comes to the price especially it's not very expensive it will not break your bank while there are a lot of products to suit your needs and budget in the market I think the products that we spoke about and argued about are the ones that will make you stand out in front of your loved ones right through absolutely Rubina and I hope that the list that we just presented in front of you guys is as much helpful to you as it was to us and in the end happy valentine's day to everybody and we hope that you have a great day filled with love with the loved ones happy valentine's day again and do write to us what you ended up giving your loved one let's take a quick break right now on the gadget 360 show we've got such great stuff happening right after we come back This is not a gimmick. Now, this is Brio. It's an eye massager. And like I said right in the beginning, could be good as a very nice gift to give to someone. Just make sure that when you buy gifts like this, I mean, what are these supposed to be? Leisure or health? They're not medical devices, but they're just interesting devices. And this is an eye massager. It has all the typical stuff you want. Three kind of massages, three different categories. One of them to actually make you go to sleep, which I think is the most dangerous thing that could happen because you're going to go to sleep wearing this. Not necessarily the greatest idea, but I get the point. It will relax you down, right? And like I said, lots of people buy stuff like this. It's very exciting in the beginning. Use it for a month and never use it again. Let's find out, is this a long-term investment? At a time when all of us are glued to our screens for our work, no thanks to the pandemic, headaches and dry eyes have unfortunately become really common. To help in solving this issue, Brio has introduced their latest eye massager, the IC4. This portable device packs in some astonishing features which guarantee a premium relaxing experience at an affordable price. So without further ado, let's get to the most relaxing review we have done in a while. Brio has taken a very subtle approach when it comes to the design of the IC4. The eye massager comes in a pale white color with a brown strap. To its credit, the eye massager is indeed lightweight and sits comfortably on the eyes once put up. Also, the padding on the inside is on the softer side, something very important on a device of this nature. That being said, keeping the cushions clean and sanitized is a task since the pad tends to get dirty quickly. 
There is also an LED display that reflects basic data like the massage mode that the user has set the device to. Speaking of massage, there are three unique massage modes on the IC4, sleep, medium and hard, each of which comes with a predetermined time limit. We started our testing with setting the massager on hard mode. On just one tap of a button, we could feel the massager creating a comforting grip around our eyes. While the heat setting was just about right, we did feel that the cushion flex was on a stronger side, which might make some users uncomfortable. Stepping down to medium settings, the experience was just about perfect. With intelligent air pressure, the massager exerts a uniform push on the eyes, which is soothing. After this long and relaxing session, it was time to test the sleep mode. From the mechanical viewpoint, the mild and sleep mode felt the same. But what adds zing to the experience is the preset of soothing music that plays out of the headgear. After that hectic testing session, sarcasm intended, it was time to charge the IC4. The compact eye massager gave us a mileage of about 2 hours before running out of juice. For an average user, that is a battery life for about 6 sessions depending on how long you keep it on. So should you relax with the Brio IC4? We should say yes. The technology on this portable massager is commendable given its size. And at just rupees 8000, it won't pinch your pocket either. That then is the Gadget 360 show for this week. Like I said, I really enjoy bringing this, you know, almost pot puree of things to you. Not just one particular thing, but lots of interesting things happening. I'll see you next week right here on the show. Mm -hmm.